Hey everybody, before I jump right in this video, sorry for the delay. I kept having issues with my rendering. My computer is pretty old, so it kept crashing uh, during the rendering process. I know I was plugging along on Discord and um, hyping up the release, so sorry about that. Uh, and also, I found this website called Buy Me a Coffee. Gosh, this sounds like such like a plug. It is a plug, but um, it's like Patreon. I like it more, though, because it allows people to give however much they want to. Um, so you can give, you know, a dollar, two dollars, or five dollars if you're going to be insane. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, it'd be awesome if you could support me. I'd love to use the money to buy better recording equipment, you know, computer components and all that stuff. Anyways, let's get into the video. Hello everybody, what is up? It is Cyborg Elf here with another video. I hope you enjoy my new mic. I got a new mic and I got a new monitor. So that's pretty cool. I know it's been a while since I've done a video. Sorry about that. I've just been really busy, and right now I am sick, but I still want to get this video out. So um, just, you know, please do pardon uh, if there's interruptions and it's not as high quality as normally my videos are. So this is going to be D and Spy, a video on it. And if you don't know what it is, it's a really nice tool. It's a .NET debugger and assembly editor. So essentially we can decompile um, C Sharp and .NET uh, code and recompile it in our own way and I'll, I'll go into this more dnspy is free i'll have the link just head over to releases and install it here uh, i think i downloaded this one a while back uh, or you can get the 32 or the 64 version so yeah let's hop right into it let me open up my application and it might be a little older than yours but really nothing much updates at least not stuff that we'll be touching. So I'm going to launch the x86 version. This is just to match the architecture of the game I'm going to be messing with. And let me actually uh, close all because I'd work from previous project. If you're looking at this, it looks really similar to an IDE. And I guess you could even maybe call it an IDE. Um, but a lot of like the, the Explorer, uh, Search, and all that stuff, it's very reminiscent of Visual Studio's IDE. So the game that we're going to be messing with for today's video is going to be this game right here. <laughs> uh, someone on my Discord gifted it to me, and they said they'll gift it to me if I make a video on it. All right, so that's my um, that's my excuse. So one thing that I like to note is this is really easy. D and Spy is really good for uh, Unity games because Unity games are coded in basically C sharp. Um, I'm no expert, but from my like limited experience with Unity, a lot of it's C sharp. So if we want to actually browse program files, we can see that it has Unity, Unity Player, and all that. And let's actually navigate to where we have all of our DLLs, or the majority of them. And that'll be right here. You'll see all these uh, references, reference DLLs that the game uses. We're mainly going to be looking at assembly-csharp.dll. That's where the bread and butter of what we're going to be doing is. So I'm going to actually copy this file path. And what we want to do is open this up in DNSpy. And also it's a good idea to make a backup of the two DLLs. Just so you can replace them in case you kind of corrupt the file. And if you do corrupt the file, you can even just delete the uh, the DLLs within, within this. And then go into Steam and uh, verify the integrity of the files, and it'll reinstall them for you. That's just something a little handy. But since we copied the file path, let's actually open that DLL. So we'll come here and go to that file path in assembly C sharp dot uh, DLL. So let's expand on this. Most of the stuff is going to be inside of this little uh, unnamed uh, section right here. So we have all this, and it's really beneficial to look through. And just figure out, you can figure out the gist of how everything works. And this code isn't obfuscated. Uh, it's not kind of like encrypted or it, that's a way to think of obfuscation. It, it's not like hidden. There's no effort made to hide the code in variable names. So variable names are very blatant. You know, you, this is an update variable for the, uh, the user interface. Right? Like right here is spawn points. There's probably going to be uh, some cool stuff in there. Let me actually launch the game so we can get a feel of what we're going to be doing. So we'll have this load up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's hit play. 
speed. I had the audio for this game really, really low. It's kind of loud. Um, but how it works is, you know, you just shoot. It's really dumb of a game. And then you kill them. And I'm about to die. Alright, let's just die. So I want to, first off, I want to give ourselves infinite ammo. And infinite ammo so we don't lose bullets whenever we shoot. And also the fire rate is really slow. Like, it's hard to kill um, these people. So let's exit out of our game. And here we can see, like, you know, all the codes decompiled. It's actually done really nicely uh, by, by DN Spy. Let's look for something. So let's just start with vague terms. You can search down here. We can try searching for ammo first. And we can see where it's located. Uh, we see uh, weapons and inventory manager. That actually looks like, you know, something that that our weapons and inventory, probably health, would be stored in. So, you know, you can look through here. Um, you see all this. All right, there's a lot going on. And you can, um, uh, so right here we have pickups. This is like ammo. You can pick up ammos, uh, health kits, and all that in this game. Um, current ammo. That could be cool. In, so you can modify this right here and sometimes let me show you this the code doesn't actually um, if you right click on something and you want to modify it so you can actually go here and just edit the method and you hit compile again sometimes the code you'll get errors that's because dnspy does its best to decompile but sometimes it's not always the easiest so like right here this this line right here is messed up so we can actually like you can tell what it meant it meant this to be like this uh, and then if we do that, it'll compile correctly. Uh, we're forgetting this. So if we do that, it'll compile correctly. So, you know, sometimes the DN spy can't do its, do its job completely. Uh, it sometimes needs more information. you got to input that. But, you know, that is something a part of reverse engineering that is fun. All right, let's get back on track. So we can search through and we can try to find um, names like rate of shoot. This looks interesting. So let's look into this. So this very much looks like your rate of fire. You have uh, the position of the weapon. This is for multiplayer. Since there's a multiplayer option, we're not going to be messing with that though. Uh, you have ammo sounds. Like all these variables are, are very. Um, closely uh, not that abstracted in their names where you can understand what they do easily let's look at usually stuff is called attack right so we have rate of attack this is for this right here you can see it's dot enemy attack dot enemy attack so that's not going to be anything we worry about uh, here we have void attack let's see uh, there's two weapon types it seems like single and auto so that's probably like fully automatic and not or we can see right here, this is for flamethrowers and not flamethrowers. So there's weapon types, single shot, automatic shots, rocket launchers, uh, flamethrower, and knife. I think we're going to be dealing with single shot. Let's look through more down here. And then bullet attack. This looks interesting. It's in weapon controller too. And that's kind of uh, something I hypothesized about. So just scrolling through, see if I see anything interesting. Here we have rate of shoot. So if it's greater than or equal to one F, that means it's a float. This game's really weird. When I was doing some cheat engine stuff, uh, their their health and ammo and everything is stored as floats. They don't use integers, and their variable types are basically all floats. It's kind of weird. But this does look like something that we want to mess with. So we'll come up here and click Edit Method. And here's where we'll change the code up and recompile it differently. So let's set rate of shoot right here. Let's literally just go 99999. Uh, very high value, right? Maybe that's a little too high. Um, so that's going to like all of our bullets right when we pull the trigger in the game, uh, they'll fly out really fast. So we have that done. And then I think I also saw this down here. It would be beneficial to get rid of this. Because uh, this is setting the bool attack to false. And we always want to be able to shoot if we're going for uh, infinite fire. Here we have rocket speed, so you can edit this too. Uh, if you please, I haven't messed around with the rockets in this game, so I really don't. 
I don't know. And then cur ammo. Um, C-U-R is very much abbreviation for current. So every time we attack, our ammo goes down by one. So every time you shoot a bullet, you know, you lose a bullet. That's the logic this game uses. So we can actually get rid of this and we can just set it where we can do this. I'm sure I'll make some C sharp people mad. C sharp is not really my coding language. Uh, we can do this and our ammo won't change. So I hit compile and right earlier I said, um, D and spy can't always do its job 100% of decompiling and we have to intervene. Here's a thing, you don't need to worry about these warnings, at least I've never needed to. Um, kind of sloppy, but so Unity Engine, this is what it's wanting. It's, it doesn't know if this is supposed to be Unity Engine um, to reference the object or is it just supposed to be, I believe it's, it thinks it might be this or object, so it doesn't know. I've just tested this and I know that Unity Engine does get these errors to go away. So we'll copy that, we'll go here, put Unity Engine there, right there, right there, and right there. And it should compile, that looks good. A little note, um, you should have the game closed before you save this. So to resave it, we need to go to Save Module and make sure it's the same location, you know, in the uh, file. And we'll overwrite that and the module saved. When we launch up, everything should be good. Oops. Okay, let's get in here. Let's see if it worked. <laughs> I don't know if you can, how loud the audio is, but it's very, very loud here. All right. Yeah, so we successfully modified the game, the game, the the code of the game. So normally, like stuff we've done is with um, uh, external read and write memory, but we literally went in and modified the code of the game. So that's awesome. I hope you learned something in this video. Uh, anyways, peace out.